Good morning and welcome to our service for the 13th of November, Remembrance Sunday. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And with a special poignancy today, we share the peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let's pray for peace for ourselves, our families and friends, and for the whole world. And our readings. Our first reading is from 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 6 to 13. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teaching you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, labouring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this, not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule, the one who is unwilling to work should not eat. We hear that some among you are idle and disruptive. They are not busy, they are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the food they eat. And as for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our Gospel reading comes from Luke. Chapter 21, verses 5 to 19. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some of Jesus' disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, As for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, watch out that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name claiming I am he and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. 
These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, we remember those who died and suffered as a result of war. The focus of Remembrance Sunday is often the allies of the First and Second World Wars, and we can sometimes forget that people from many nations fought on what we could call our side in this country. It is a good reminder when we see the Gurkhas lay their memorial at the Cenotaph, and we know that people of many races and creeds fought alongside the allies. We also forget maybe our foes, many of whom were just ordinary folk. In Germany, the main enemy of these wars, they do remember their fallen too, but not at the same time and without any of the sense of triumphalism that can creep into our marking the occasion if we are not careful. We can also forget other conflicts in which this nation and its allies have been involved. Korea, the Falklands, Northern Ireland, Iraq, Afghanistan. We may not agree that we should have become involved, but that is not to deny the brave acts that were carried out and the injuries and bereavements that were suffered, for which people need the help of the money which is raised by the poppy campaign. Interestingly, most years white poppies sell out as people want to mark the occasion but avoid any sense of glorifying in war. White poppies for peace. Many people like me wear both a white and a red poppy as a reminder of the need for peace in the future as well as remembrance of the past. In the reading from Luke's Gospel, Jesus spoke of turbulent times, of wars and insurrection. He said that nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And the world has, it seems, always been like this. At any given time there has been some sort of war or conflict going on. Those of us who are over 83 have experienced a world war. If we have lived in this country all our lives, we may have been alive when this country has gone to war or become involved in conflicts such as the Korean War, Northern Ireland, the Falklands and in fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan, but there may be people we know who have experienced war or terrorism or fighting directly in the countries they came from. We still see terrible things happening in Syria and Yemen, and of course Ukraine has emerged as a bloody conflict indeed, as well as unrest and militia-led uprisings in parts of Africa. The UN has its peace force, and that seems like a good model. Our army was instrumental a few years ago in securing peace in Sierra Leone, and peacemaking is a fine calling. Maybe we need more of that sort of approach to the way our army works for us. We know war is not God's will for us. He created us to live for him and to reach our full potential. We know that Jesus preached nothing but peace, 
but still wars and fighting go on and we can look at this and despair. But Jesus says, do not be frightened. And that's an important phrase as it echoes what the angel said to Mary when he told her that she was going to have the baby who turned out to be Jesus. It reminds us of what more angels said to the shepherds when they met them on the hillside to tell them of the Saviour's birth in Bethlehem. And it recalls the word, words of the angels to Mary Magdalene and the others when they found the tomb empty on Easter Sunday. Jesus tells us that even if we are persecuted for our beliefs, we should not be afraid, but should be strong in our faith. The phrase we hear so much these days is, keep calm and carry on, which are wars from a poster from the Second World War. But we Christians have the words of Psalm 46 verse 10, be calm and know that I am God. We have the assurance from the Luke reading that not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. Jesus is saying that what is important is not our physical life here on earth, but our eternal life in heaven with him. As Christians, trying our hardest to live like Jesus, that eternal life is absolutely guaranteed. So, unlike many others around us, we have hope. We do not need to despair, but we can launch out in the knowledge that one day we will be with God, whatever the world throws at us. And in the meanwhile, we need to be people of peace and to be showing the love of Christ to all we meet. Faith will keep us strong. We can have hope in the future. We need to show love. In 1 Corinthians 13, St Paul says, Faith, hope and love abide, and the greatest of these is love. The love of Jesus and God for us, and the love for us for, of us for others, that is all that matters, whatever turmoil and torments the world is going through. Let us pray. Let peace begin with us, O Lord. Let not our hearts harbour hatred. Help us to endure all things through faith. Maintain hope in our hearts, for we know where we are going. And show your love as we serve you and work for righteousness. Amen. And we affirm our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And our prayers. <clears throat> the prophet Malachi, in one of the other readings for today, tells us, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. Lord, we look forward to that day when all the earth will see your glory. We long for the time when there will be no more crying, heartache and pain. We yearn for you to bring in your new kingdom on the earth. But until that day, we must live in the in-between times and we don't always find it a comfortable place to be. Lord, you predicted that this world would be torn apart by war. As we remember all those who fell in the two world wars and all the conflicts since, we come humbly to you, acknowledging our part in discord, disharmony, disagreement and discouragement. We ask for your forgiveness. We pray for the places currently in conflict in our world, Ukraine, Yemen, Syria, Afghanistan and many parts of Africa. We pray for our armed forces as they seek to keep the peace in very challenging circumstances. We pause to remember all who have fallen while fighting for their country.
Lord, we remember that you also warned us of natural disasters. We pray for those suffering the effects of flooding in Pakistan and cyclones in Central America that wiped out livelihoods. We pray for those who are displaced because of the changing climate and have nowhere to call home. We continue to lift up our world leaders at the COP27 conference, asking that you will help them avert further disaster to our climate by behaving with integrity and compassion, putting aside all greed and discord. Lord, we know that your followers are not immune to pain and trouble. We pause to pray now for all those we know who are suffering from pain, sickness, fear, anxiety, sorrow or any other trouble. We seek your comfort for them and for ourselves, knowing that you are a God of compassion and endless love. We also remember that you are a God of victory, who promised that you had overcome the world. So we ask you to give us good memories, to help us focus on the times in our lives when you brought us peace in our distress, answers to hard questions, solace in our pain. We know that your perfect love can drive out our fear, so we ask you to give us the courage to seek out that love when we are struggling, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness throughout our lives. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you. Lord, we pray for our nation at this time of remembrance. We pray for our government and all who serve, asking that you will give them wisdom and integrity. We pray for Christians who hold high office and continue to ask your blessing on our new king as he seeks to live in a way that honours you. We pray for all who work to relieve suffering and walk alongside victims of trauma and abuse. We pray for the refugees who even now will be arriving wet and cold and disorientated on our shores. We pray for the USA after the midterm elections that the government will have the courage to be a unifying presence and not foster discord. Lord, help us to stand firm in your love and faithfulness and follow you with determination, knowing that you are always beside us, loving and guiding us. Help us to take heart, stand firm and walk closely with you. Amen. And the Collect for today. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us children of God and heirs to eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer we say together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And our notices. Messy Church will take place on, at St Barnabas from four o'clock tomorrow, the 14th of November. The theme is Angels. And Mother's Union meets in the Pearson Lounge at St Barnabas at 2.30 on Tuesday, the 15th of November. A special guest speaker will be talking about her trip to the Passion Play in Oberammergau this summer.
Men's Breakfast will take place at St Barnabas on the 19th of November. And also on the 19th of November, but in the evening at 7.30, there is a concert by the Waterside Choirs and the Fisherman's Chapel Gospel Choir at 7.30 at the Salvation Army Temple. Tickets are £6. We're going to have a quick meeting of the PCC next Sunday at St James, um, next Sunday the 20th of November, just to consider a very quick matter. Another concert, the Allegro Singers are putting on a concert in aid of the Friends of St James at St Barnabas at three o'clock on Sunday the 27th of November and tickets for that are £10. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>